his fascination with snakes. Um, I'm very much like you, Rickson. Uh, I respect snakes, and I think they're fascinating animals. Um, but um, just to see a snake is very good, always good enough for me. Uh, you know, let them carry on with their own business. Uh, a few times, and uh, maybe a few viewers out there can uh, recall uh, one of my first drives with the Wild Earth team uh, went out uh, in search for termites, um, the, the fungus growing termites. And uh, it's, uh, you have to be a little bit cautious when you go looking for these uh, or scratching around in these holes. Uh, it's uh, not uncommon for snakes to actually utilize these old termite mounds. And um, very often I'd say to Alex, uh, I've got to be careful now because uh, maybe there's a black mamba in here. And his response would just be, I hope so. So it's uh, yeah, he he's uh, had a fascination with the, the snakes, and it's good to have someone like that around. Uh, when the snake does come, uh, he can come and enjoy himself with it and take care of the situation. Ah, oh, that's cool, huh? We have spoken. I mean, it shows that we all love Alex. Uh, he left us with peace. He's going to do something in part of the world. I believe one day we'll be back. Um, yeah, really, we enjoy much of this uh, fight chat. Um, uh, for more, I mean, I still have more questions for you, Marco. Mm. Um, when I come back on my leave, I heard that there was the two uh, mail lines that enter south southwest of uh, the area. One is more nervous and so on. What do you think? What's going to happen? Because my pochos are off from the property down south. What's going to happen here around the area with this new nomadic mail coming in and off? Yeah, that's. Um Quite interesting. It's um, it's been a while since uh, well, since I've been here. I haven't seen uh, any other lion bar the the Mopohos. Um and I believe um, since the Mopohos moved into the area, there hasn't been much activity of other lion passing through. So it's nice to see um, activity of lions moving to the area again, um, and especially two males, two nomadic males. Uh, they uh, on the time that um, we got to spend with them, uh, Rex, and we didn't see them marking or anything along those lines. So um, it'll be interesting to see if they're passing through and trying to going to try and establish a territory somewhere. Um, but they still got a lot to a lot of growing to go before they could pose a, a, a big um, uh, threat to the Mapuchos even. Um, but I, yeah, with the coalition of the Mapuchos, they haven't been through uh, Western Gauri uh, recently. So um, uh, well, I think the last time we saw them was with the buffalo, and that yeah. was two months ago two now. Months ago. So scent isn't uh, fresh out in the bush. Um, these uh, two nomadic males um, perhaps won't pick up on that uh, fresh scent of uh, uh, other dominant males in the area. So it's possible that's why they might be exploring quite freely at the moment. Um, but uh, if they become vocal, um, I'm sure that uh, the Mopojos will at some point uh, come and investigate and, um, and see what's happening. So it'll be an interesting turn of events. Uh. Yeah, it's, it's a great because... <coughs> As Marco said, with those two young males, I also mentioned on life, on our drive, that uh, they're still young. I don't see future of them hanging around in the area because they have to grow, grow big and more attraction to the females. But more news about new nomadic males that enter from southwest around Bush Lodge area. Uh, there's a two males that come from the other side too. Okay, uh, sorry, ap apolo apologies, yes, yes, you're right. Um, I, I thought you were talking of the Manuelletti males, that those two youngsters that uh, had uh, come in from the north, from Buffaltuk area. Um, that's right, that was quite new. Yeah. Um, two big males, I believe, and they were on a buffalo carcass. Yes. Yes, that's right. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that will be interesting. Eh? I think if uh, a few of the Mapojos are caught out, um, maybe individually or just two, uh, um, uh, it's always interesting to see if um, uh, there, there can be some change to the structure of the dominance in the area. So, um, but I think if they come across the full strength of the Mapojos, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a problem. But uh, the Mapojos, um, I haven't seen them in full strength yet. I just see either three or, or, or four together. And, um, um, and that means there's two or one running around uh, or moving around by himself. So if those uh, two males come across them, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It will... <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we haven't seen these two males that are coming from south, southwest or southeast. Uh, it looked like they were on a buffalo kill. It might slowly, slowly enter into the area. It looked like the area around here, Mapoho, they've been away for a while. At least it's been two months now Mapoho was away. If those two males enter into the area, they will try to settle around in the area. We never know what's going to happen. We're not saying the Mapoho is, go I mean, is going to be kicked out. But if they're caught being alone or two, 
it will be something that we're going to witness. It's going to be change the whole plan of Mapochos, which are around in the area. So, yeah, I believe if they come down here, it will be something. And there was a lot of questions. People that were asking what is going to happen with the Mapocho. They're going to stay in the area, killing all the lion, virtually spread the, the gene around in the area. It's not going to affect the population of the lions. It's something now, it's happening. I mean, a new nomadic male coming from southeast, they will be in the area. We don't know what's going to happen. Maybe Mapocho will come being four, three, and or five. Also, the new males, you never know what's going to happen. But I believe this is the right time for Mapoko, I mean, to split out into different females around the area. And I know that there's many questions that are coming through about these um, notorious males around in the area. So here's an answer for today. I believe, yeah, it's the right time for now um, for, for a change. Yeah, I believe uh, Peter is going to come and uh, join me for a while and sit and have a chat about uh, the week's events. Uh, so, um, yeah, thanks, Eric. It's been good uh, having you here. And uh, it's good to have you back and uh, just chatting. Uh, it's always nice for everybody to come and join us around the fire here and just get a feel of what life really is like for us out here. We spend, um, it's not just a Sunday night um, live broadcast that we come and sit around the fire. This is a very um, regular thing that we do out here in the bush. And um, it's, a, it's a very important part for us. Uh, it's a good time for friends to talk and uh, discussions and ideas and uh, just general chit chat about what's happening in life and what's happening around us so it's um yeah it's always good and it's always good to have other faces and a lot of new faces uh, all around us staring at us um, coming to see how things are and how life is um, out over here with the wild earth crew but um, yeah always uh, welcome to see new friends and new faces out over here so I think let's uh, get Mr. Peter Pretorius uh, out here and um, Peter, are you hiding away from us? He's very shy. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I was waiting so you could hear me. <laughs> um, we're going to stop change with uh, Rex just now. Actually, just um, I actually wanted to jump in here earlier, but I didn't want to invade. You guys were chatting away. Uh, one of the quick questions that just came through while while you were talking regarding the Shangan earlier. Uh, Rixon was the the name for an owl in Shangan. Is it Skova? I know that's the Fanaga law name. Is it exactly the same in Shangan? Eh? S K O V A. Skova. I actually had a friend that was called Skova. He had one eye that always looked a little bit like this, just because uh, like an owl checking checking with different angles. Um, and and also Marco, since we're in a sort of live space around the fire now, sure. I'm going to have to put you a little bit on the spot if that's all right. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Alex gave you the blue suit to wear, and it's not that cold tonight, but uh, maybe just show people what it looks like. You know, Alex, it took forever for us to get Alex in front of the camera. Eventually, did a drive, which was, which was a very special experience for, for me personally as well, um, and, and for everyone else going along with him. But I just really enjoyed seeing Alex come out. He's, he's got a great heart and a great passion for Africa. And uh, I think the, the blue suit should maybe be showcased a little bit quicker this time. It took us weeks of joking with Alex before he finally stood around in it. But uh, it's up to you, Marco. Of course, there's no pressure. There's lots of people who want to see it, I'm sure. Grab a seat, Peter. <laughs> Grab this one. Um, cool. Well, we've changed our plan a little bit in terms of who's talking where. But, um, yes. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, we have, have questions that uh, we need to answer for... Uh, tonight, I mean, next time I believe we'll have more questions. Sometimes we might run out of uh, info that we have to give, but there's quite a lot of things that we can really chat around the fire here, as I mean, Marco is going to wear a suit <laughs> to say <laughs> goodbye from Alex. It's a gift that has been gifted from Alex. It's, it's very nice uh, overall that it's, it's going to use it in winter, wherever he will be here, or in part of the world if he really wants to to go out it was very really, really good yeah and no, it certainly served alex well and um and and I, I got a little bit nostalgic in the in the control center listening to you guys talking about alex um yeah it's it's like rexon said alex was a friend um and and not just to not just to us here at camp also to you uh, everyone else that that's that's come with wild earth where it's the last few days maybe or whether it's the last year or two um he was certainly a, a, a character and in, in a big way so um yeah, heads up to Alex. But Rex, and I also heard you saying you hope he comes back. I'm sure Alex will be back will at some back. stage. Yeah, he's, uh, some he's one of those guys that back. the world is his home. He yeah. moves around the, the same as the same as uh, a lot of us. So um, <laughs> I see Marco grinning over there. Luckily, it's a friendly grin. 